got eight columns to do here. And we've got a little bit to do on the edge of the garage. Just that little one foot section right there. All the way along the edge of the building. If it feathers down to almost nothing right there. That's pretty much it. Southerstone was done a while ago. We're just coming to add some more to it. This stone style for this project we're doing here is called Southern Ledgestone Gray. Just in case you want to do that, that's the name of it. We're just using natural mortar. This is a brow product, cultured stone. So we're just using the Type S as always. And it's just a commercial grade quick creek type S mortar. We didn't put any dye or anything in it. We did end up using some of this uh, concrete bonding adhesive in each batch, just a couple of glugs in each batch. These stones are about two inches tall, so if you're ever going to dry stack this style of stone, then you got to calculate a lot more stone because it's only two inches. So every everywhere there's a joint here, then you got a half inch. So about every two inches you got to calculate about an inch, an inch more stone. So. I'd say about every three rows, you're going to need an extra row of stone. So if you're going to dry stack it, it actually looks pretty good dry stacked. So it's not a bad look. It's just you just got to figure a lot more stone for it. So just to, so if you're going to do that, make sure you put the extra stone in your bid because you'll lose your cakes on it because your stone will cost you a lot more money. But you do save in mortar, which isn't very much. So anyway, the stone's going to cost way more than the mortar ever did. It's coming along slowly but surely these little strips done got three and a half more columns left to do and the cats
this brush right here is kind of a stiff, pretty stiff bristle. When they come, their bristles are about an inch and a half longer than, than this. We just hold them like this and then cut them off the grinder so they're a little stiffer. And it, it's a pretty nice brush for reaching in there and getting the stuff out. Then this brush is really soft. So if you're doing a like a finish where you're doing joints, I like to use a softer bristled brush, a little soft, and it uh, doesn't dig into the mortar and make lines in it. But when I'm dry stacking it, I use this way more. Usually I have different size of picks. Got three different sizes here. This one was, these two are probably the same size. This one just got ground down. But anyway, it's just nice to have a variety. This one's about three eighths wide. This one's probably quarter and this is a three sixteenths. So sometimes your joints vary. Some, they shouldn't vary too much, but it's nice to be able to reach in certain spots. We usually bend the end of it like that so that your knuckles are staying away from the, so it's flat like that. Let's stay, your knuckles are back here out of the way. You can reach in there a little better. So about an inch on the end, bend it flat. Just different, however you want to bend them. But makes it a little easier to reach in there. I'm using an eight inch, two, eight inch by two inch wide marginal trowel. And it's nice because it reaches flat into the bottom of the bucket and allows you to get the last bit out of there. Whereas uh, those pointed masonry trials for doing stone, they're shaped kind of like that. And then the handle. But these, you can't get down in the bottom of the bucket. You're leaving about three inches in there. Two, two to three inches in the bottom of the bucket you can't get out. This just allows you to get, get it down closer to the bottom. Because when you go to mix your next batch, then you're your old mortar that's starting to get hard will make your new mortar that you mix on top of it makes it kick a lot faster you have eight columns to do so that's 32 of these caps I gotta cut. Selecting a, a corner to cut off of these stones here. We're cutting them, cutting them out of a full piece. So here's the full piece here. A lot of times these these pieces have a they vary. So we got we've got about an inch and a half, a little less. Got an inch and five eighths. And then down here, we've got an inch and seven eighths. So I always pick the beefiest edge. So I'm going to select this side that's uh, it's actually inch and three quarters plus, but. So it's the thickest edge. So I'm gonna measure off of this corner like this. And I'm gonna cut off that thin edge down there. 
because it just looks weird when you see the stone go from one side of the and it goes from one side of the cap to the other side and it just goes thinner and thinner along the edge so if you just get the thickest part then it looks a little better we caulked around these here we use some uh, it's called quad so this is what I used quad all-purpose formula cleans up with mineral spirits I used gray on this application so it says masonry right there on it brick concrete has quite a few other applications Home Depot sells it but I wanted to show this crack in this post you got to get your your caulk back in there so that the water won't run down in there because it'll still get down inside your cone and crack it apart so that you don't have mortar going down there because the wood expands differently than the caps protects it from cracking <laughs> four feet long about probably 20 inches tall you can see the individual block so that's one block right there see the bigger joint where it is pretty cool though about 15 feet tall They're about two feet thick, so they're embedded into the dirt about two feet. So the corn, they wrap the corners around, stepped it. Looks pretty nice. That's how thick they are. Probably a little over two feet, probably 30 inches. our load ready to go here's our drone it's gonna follow us a ways it's a heavy load we got about 3,000 pounds on there plus the skitter the skitter weighs about 12 this trailer weighs 60 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> 